And welcome back to the Richmond Coliseum. They have ice outside, but yet, uh, despite the fact they sold over 10,000 seats, not a capacity crowd, but a very vocal crowd indeed. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, for Virginia Tech, you see Jackson, freshman uh, Ace Custis, Carruth, the senior Purcell, and good for Virginia Tech. Jimmy Carruth has played better, too, down offensively. He's been much more assertive. Purcell, the guy that leads them, and uh, Ace Custis, an exciting freshman. We've already talked about them. You look at the VCU lineup. Kendrick Warren has been there all year, obviously. He'll try to operate down low on the baseline. Tyrone McCoy, Terrence Gibson, Kenny Harris can all shoot the threes. Anytime you defend them, you've got to get out on those three shooters. If two out of the three are shooting well, well it could be a long night for the opposition. Of course, Virginia Tech, coached by the veteran Bill Foster and we mentioned that 10 and 1 start earlier the best in over a decade trying to get his team to shoot the ball better and Sonny Smith always fun to come to VCU land he has a good basketball team and they like to get it up and down the floor we'll have the opening tip as our prime hoops in the metro from the Richmond Coliseum and we'll tip it off Tech and VCU in a moment back to the Richmond Coliseum Virginia Tech and the Rams of VCU in our Metro Hoops on Prime. VCU, as Terry mentioned, an eight-day layoff. They have played four games in seven days prior to that in our matchups, Terry, some interesting ones. Well, I think whoever guards Kendrick Warren obviously will get a lot of help. So you'll see Ace Custis and a Jackson down low against him. I think Virginia Tech's going to stop the penetration down of Kenny Harris. That's the first thing. Then get out on shooters for Virginia Tech. You know, a Gibson and a Harris, very good defenders on Jay Purcell and Sean Good. And Kendrick scoring Warren his way out to jump center. This has been an interesting series. VCU leads, and they have really dominated uh, over the past uh, couple of years. Matter of fact, they've won the last four games in this series. Jim Burr, Lenny Wirtz, and Max Chauvin are officials in this Metro matchup. Always fun when VCU and Virginia Tech get together. You can throw the University of Virginia in there as well. Any uh, of the three teams from this Commonwealth, they play a little bit harder when they tee it up. They do indeed, and VCU has the first scoring opportunity as Kenny Harris has the ball. As we mentioned, they sold uh, over 10,000 seats. Matter of fact, a lot more people starting to come in. We bring out the best in the weather here at Richmond. I see every time we come to town. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Here's McCoy with it, trying to penetrate on Jackson. Shot clock at 13. Warren off balance jumper. McCoy with the follow. And Jim Jackson chases it down for the Hokie. A couple of good ones for VCU. It wouldn't go. So Ruth got caught on Kendrick Warren. That can't happen very often. Now, Terry, as you mentioned, Virginia Tech's biggest problem, particularly late in the game, has not been able to shoot the ball. The problem here, though, is the turnover as it goes right through the wickets of Jim Jackson, right through his legs. Didn't look it into his hand. Went right through the... Uh, both teams right now down start out in straight man-to-man. -man. And as we said the last time down, and, and again this time, Jimmy Carruth starting on Kendrick Ward, which is kind of an odd matchup. Kendrick... Will uh, try to use his quickness against Kirill. Speaking of quickness, a good job that time by Sean Good to come up with a steal for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. This is Jim Jackson against McCoy. Here's the freshman Custis. He rolls it off. Ashby flips out the rebound to Kenny Harris. We're looking for our first score in the game. We're about a minute 30 in, and this guy can score almost at will, but prior to that, Lenny Wirtz detects a foul, and it's going to be against the Hokies. It's on the freshman, Ace Custis. Well, there's that matchup that we highlighted at the beginning of the game. Ace Custis and Kendrick Ward going head-to-head. -head. The experienced Ward and the, uh, the youngster, Ace Custis, and the first time Ward gets him down low on the block, he draws the foul. It's a common foul, so the Rams will trigger it in. Here's Harris wide open for the three. I'll tell you what, John, I, I really do think Kenny Harris has got a great shot at being an NBA point guard. You know, for that reason alone, shoots the three. Jay Purcell shoots an air ball. Here comes Kendrick Warren, stop and go dribble. Look at that move. Didn't get it, tries to tip it in. 
Virginia Tech's going to have to get back on defense. They've, they've got to make this more of a half-court game. If Kendrick Ward's able to get out on the break, it's a uh, good night. Right now, the Rams shooting a 5 nothing shutout against the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Here's Custis with it, had it knocked away, and Kendrick Ward slapped it away. Now, if you get caught one-on-one -on -one with Kendrick Warren on a fast break, uh, Ace Custis might as well just run down the other end and start to play offense. He's going <laughs> to score on you or he's going to draw the foul. And this time it takes him two shot attempts, but he does get the bucket. Now, what a, what a great spin move. And there's another guy who will play in the NBA. If he could add a 15-foot jump shot to his repertoire, he would really be something else. So once again, a lot of pro scouts here to take a look at Kenny Harris and Kendrick Warren and company. Purcell tries to penetrate and slapped it away. McCoy, he didn't get it. Ashby had it rejected. Wow, this crowd is a loud one. And it's louder as Terrence Gibson rolls the three. So many weapons offensively for VCU. They've been quiet as of late, but they're out tonight. Jim Jackson misses, and once again, Virginia Tech has not been able to hit the hoop. But we have a whistle and a foul underneath as Bill Foster's club will get the ball back. Now, Bill Foster's club had the great start. That's one of the long, long time. And as of late, they just been ha haven't been able to put the ball in the basket, Don. You run into that. Maybe it's statewide. Virginia having the same problems these days. <laughs> Seems to be a, tr a problem in the state. The quick hands of Kenny Harris once again. Third turnover already in the game for the Hokies of Virginia Tech, and they are down 8-zip. And the right idea by Rodney Ashby, but he bounces it right by Kendrick Warren. Some discussion, and you can see Jimmy Carruth, who has had that wrist injury all season long. Actually, it even goes back to last year, and he's just had a tough time dealing with it. He's a hard-working young man, and now he's going to have to take a seat as Sean Smith comes in. You talk to him, and he says it's even made him better because he's had to use his left hand much more to develop that. But, you know, every time it gets smacked, you know, back goes the rehabilitation process. And, and right now, still very short. And you know one thing about that big senior, Terry, he's a real gamer. It takes a lot to get him out of there. We have played almost three and a half minutes in this game, and the Hokies have yet to put up a point on the board. So Sean Smith into the ball game for uh, Jimmy Carruth. Smith, the uh, the mail truck. Yep. Not the mail man, but the, the whole truck. <laughs> there exactly he is with right. the basketball. That's exactly right. Was on the All-Metro freshman team a year ago. 16-20 left. It's 8-0. VCU Custis finally gets the first two in the game for the Hokies. Ace averaging 11-2 and 9.6 rebounds. It took them three minutes and 46 seconds to get on the board. Oh, There's a right. shot that'll go by Warren, and he'll go to the line. Right back at Ace Custis at the other end. Now, if Ace is going to get his offensively tonight, they're going to make him work defensively. You know, watch Kendrick Warren just back him in, uses his body, uses his strength, up and under, slides through, draws the foul and the bucket. And Kendrick Warren caps the three-point play, and now Terry has moved to the number two position in VCU scoring as he has passed Charles Wilkins in that honor. 11-2 our score, out of bounds, Virginia Tech throws it away. A shaky start for Virginia Tech, but Kendrick Warren continues to put up the impressive numbers, as does VCU, leading by nine. Eight possessions in the game for Virginia Tech. They've had one out of three from the floor, but more importantly, Terry, five turnovers where they didn't even get a shot. You know, a suspicious start on the road. You can't do it when you're an underdog on the road, Doc. Terrence Gibson can't get the three from the corner, so the Hokies of Virginia Tech looking for something out of the offense. Sean Smith to Sean Good, and now Custis kicks it out to Jim Jackson. Credit the defense, though. Look at the VCU man-to-man. -man. I mean, right in everyone's face. Oh, what a shot by Smith, though. Yep. Ashby on the foul, but Sean Smith just muscled him to the hoop. And how many times did we see that from this big 6'6", 270-pounder? Last year as a freshman out of Gastonia, North Carolina. One of the things, he has not lost any weight, Terry, but he has dropped some body fat. Is that right? That's right. Who told you that? 
It was in the game notes. Oh. <laughs> you can tell I thought it was visually. I, I was going to worry about Actually, you. Actually, well, you know. Not everybody can be slim and trim like you all the time, you know? I think uh, Sean Smith's one of those guys, though, if he could lose uh, maybe a good 20 pounds, really would be a heck of a player because he's a pretty darn good player right now. No, but right there. I mean, uh, Warren, the first step, there's absolutely no way Sean Smith is going to stay with Kendrick Warren on the baseline. Not at all, and Kendrick Warren has put in seven points already. That equals the largest lead in the game for... BCU. Here's good. He can't hit the three. And McCoy with the rebound brings it out on the break. Look at that stop and go. Nice dish to Ashby. Wow. Tyrone McCoy, not normally the distributor. From behind the back and an easy one for Rodney Ashby below. He's usually the recipient of the pass. Yes. Here's Jay Purcell, the leading scorer. He shot two air balls in this game. Custis, though, picks up his second field goal. And the freshman out of Eastville, Virginia. Now here on the defensive end, I like what Bill Foster did. It, it was surprising he put Jimmy Carruth on Kendrick Warren, but that kept him out of the middle. Oh, Kenny Harris, was that sweet? Give him five. He saw the opening, Terry, and you know, when he sees that, he likes to shoot the three, but as we mentioned in the tees, he will not hesitate one bit to take it to the hole. Going back to my point a moment ago, Don, Jimmy Carruth started on Warren and kept him out of the middle. But now with Carruth on the bench with the injury, you've got to go to a Sean Smith. That's a tough matchup for the sophomore. Kendrick Warren just takes him one way, brings him back, and gets the easy little fadeaway one-hander. There aren't many guys who can stop Kendrick Warren, but at least Carruth with his size forces him out of the middle a little bit. And I think Kendrick on the outside not as effective because he's really not a big threat to shoot the J. Harris will shoot the J and drills the three. Wow, what a start, huh? Yeah. You know, Terry, we mentioned an eight-day layoff. Three out of four from three-point land for VCU, and VCU is about as fresh as I've seen them all season. Right now, Jim Jackson can't hit it. Kenny Harris gets the rebound, and here comes the Rams on the break, and Harris had it rejected. Nice block by Travis Jackson. He slapped it away, but Kareem Washington gets it right back. He lost it. Now he needs some help and finds Kenny Harris. Both Harris and Kareem Washington had the lob for Kendrick Warren. Chose not to go to it. So Kareem Washington and George Bird in the VCU lineup. We mentioned Travis Jackson in for Virginia Tech. Straight away, McCoy short on the three. And Jackson got a block a moment ago, gets his first rebound of the game right here. Now this Jackson having an impact early. 20 to 7. VCU with the lead. Virginia Tech with the ball. We're glad to have you along in our prime hoop. Nice oh, give and go to Jackson. Give the assist to Travis Jackson. It goes to Jim Jackson. Jackson to Jackson, part of the Jackson Four at Virginia Tech. That's right. Here we go. We got Travis, you have Corey, you have Jim, and Jim's brother, David who transferred from UNC uh, Asheville. One more and you would have. Well, the five, but that would be a cliche. So they're <laughs> going to stop it at four. <laughs> Sean Good gets the personal foul. Marty Arnoff, our A statistician. Good to have Marty back with us here in icy Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> what is it about this weather? It's following us. Just, you got to love it, Don. You, you got you to be hardy in this weather. No, no doubt about that. Kenny Harris as he does so well. Terry, I agree. I, Kenny Harris, every time I see him play, does so much more. He's made himself, I think, into a, a legitimate NBA prospect. Look at Kareem Washington. He missed it. And Skyne for the rebound that time was Corey Jackson, 6'7", senior, who's checked into the lineup for Virginia Tech. This is Travis Jackson. Watlington is shooter. Maybe he can get something going here. They've really been struggling offensively. Well, this time it's Corey Jackson on the turnaround for his first two. And it's 20 to 11. And Warren will chase it down near the timeline. And they get him on a violation. And over and back, says Lenny Wirtz. Well, Sonny Smith talking about that particular call. 11.49 left in the first half. BCU with the nine-point lead here in Richmond.
Napoli, but watch the last possession, what happens. It's an over and back call. Now the ball's tipped right there, so you can go back court. Kendrick Warren would be fine going into the back court to get the ball. Now he has possession, though. So you, a whole new possession starts. Guess what? He goes in back. That's an over and back. I think they could have called a walking violation on that, too. So you take your pick. But once he had possession, he went back court time. And you see the rebounding leaders in the NCAA. Two Metro players in the top 15. Kendrick Warren, fourth, averaging 12-5 a game. Sean Smith misses Purcell. Dishes outside to Damon Watlington. Well, that's absolutely what they need. Somebody to open it up from the outside, and Watlington surely can shoot the three. He's done it all year. That makes it a six-point game, so the Hokies coming right back. Kendrick Warren misses. Travis Jackson fights, had the rebound, and lost it. And in a foul underneath the basket. Virginia Tech on a 7-0 run right now, and that guy Travis Jackson, who just got the foul, however, has been a big part of that. Damon Watlington, by the way, asked you for a shout-out tonight. You know how to handle that? Uh, I said his name. Uh, I guess that test there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a youthful term. Well, I, I told him to uh, shoot a few threes, and, and then he'll get the shout-out, and, and he did, straight off the bench. Kendrick gets his first breather of the game as Rodney Ashby back into the VCU lineup. Inside a lot of traffic, but Bird can't get it up and in as he tried, but the Virginia Tech rebound, and then Purcell gets called for the travel. Bill Foster wanted it over and back. Well, you know, the Metro giving out some fan appreciation awards in the next few weeks, a chance to win a trip to the Metro tournament in Biloxi. These fans have get an award for showing up in this weather outside. Five second call and Sonny Smith not real happy because no one really moved anywhere on the inbounds play done. So Virginia Tech is cut it to six and the Hokies with the possession. No more bouncing their step now too on the 7-0 run. Hit another three. This one short. Bird chases down and gets the VCU rebound. Keith Davis into the lineup for the Rams. This is Davis number three with it. Well, this is when Virginia Tech has got to sustain the run because you've got Harris out of the ball game, you've got McCoy out of the game, and Kendrick Warren out. So Bill Foster's club's got to make a little run here, and, and they have in the last couple of minutes. And Bill Foster's team with this lineup that's on the floor now has made that comeback. Down by only six with 10.43 left. And now official Jim Burr wants to come in and talk to a couple of players and say, hey, get your position and stand there. Kareem Washington grabbed Corey Jackson's leg when Jackson tried to pick it up and put it through the double screen. He was going nowhere at that moment. So Kareem will go to the bench. Davis will trigger it in for VCU. Get it into McCoy. You got to figure out now if you're VCU where the scoring's going to come from. You've got McCoy out there. You don't have the inside presence, though. Inside to Ashby with a nice move by Jackson. Missed it. Bird tips no. And Sean Smith will get it. There's where you miss Kendrick Warren and his offensive rebounding ability. Absolutely. Jay Purcell to the baseline. To the 7-0 run, but there hasn't been a point scored in a while. This has been uh, Drought City the last few months. Wadlington with a nifty move, too strong. Travis Jackson, no. And George Bird finally fights and gets the rebound for VCU. Good looking freshman, George Bird. His third board of the game already. Here's McCoy with the three. He doesn't get it. George Bird, we talked about being a great football recruit, an 18 size shoe. Tough, both, both of us in there. Tough to order those days. Yeah, I would say. Corey Jackson on the travel. Kendrick Ward and Kenny Harris will check back in with 9.37 left. That's the ninth turnover for Virginia Tech already in this game. Most of them came early. Five of them came within the first couple of minutes. Yeah, they really got off to the poor start against the straight man-to-man -man defense, turning the ball over. Weren't sharp at all. First three, four minutes, and, and have gotten better as of late. You can see VCU with four of its own already. Here's Warren with it. Nice dish off to Rodney Ashby. 
And there will be a whistle on the floor. It's going to be on Corey Jackson. But you know, Kendrick Warren, good court awareness right there. I tell you what, you think about the next level and, and Kendrick playing on the NBA level. Doesn't this remind you of an NBA play? Just post it up, watch the double team come. He feels it right away, goes to the man cutting down the lane, and that's good recognition by Kendrick Warren. But VCU can't get a shot off as they turn it over for the fifth time. Travis Jackson along three. And McCoy and Corey Jackson were both going out after the rebound. And McCoy gets called for the foul as he was trying to root Corey Jackson out of there. Uh, Sonny Smith up and laughing on one edge of uh, end of the court. And uh, Bill Foster was at the other end as well. You don't see that call very often, the block out. You know, no hands, no illegal hold or anything. Just used his body to block him out, and he ended up underneath it. They were both leaning on each other pretty hard, and now Watlington makes an errant pass. Look at McCoy go to the basket. Wow. What a break, huh? Boy, that's his first two in the game, but I mean, he got from point A to B in a hurry. Good man to lead it, too, in Harris. First point for VCU in about five minutes. Makes it 22 14. Purcell looking to get some scoring done. Can Warren gets the rebound and Corey Jackson, the rebound foul, his second personal. About as easy as you can run a fast break. Give it to Kenny Harris, push it ahead to Tyrone McCoy. The up and under uses the basket as the shield. And it uh, looks easy when McCoy's on the receiving end. Did you ever run a break like that? Yeah, I just stopped at the three-point line. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think you made it that far. You know, you know that yellow area on the court right there? Yeah. It was illegal for me to step inside that. <laughs> I was taken out of the game as soon as I did. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's Gibson with it. Ooh, tough shot, but he draws the foul. You know, you look at this VCU team, and really, Terry, a lot of people forget the fact with Warren, McCoy, and Harris, you have three of the top seven scorers in the Metro Conference. Yeah, they're tough to defend. They, they really are when they're shooting the ball well. Now, shooting comes and goes, and, and in their last three games, they really were uh, not hard to defend because it, you, know, you don't have at least two out of the three shooting the ball well. And if you take Kendrick Warren out, you don't have an outside presence, well, then it's tough to win. You know, the loss to Louisville, I think, in this building was just one of those things. And Louisville playing so well. But then you get beat by ODU, and then you get beat at Evansville, and uh, your confidence is shaking a little bit. So I'm sure Sonny Smith really happy to see how they came out of the shoot tonight. Well, as we mentioned on our last prime telecast from here in Richmond, they did have the largest crowd ever in the state of Virginia for hoops. 12,089 here for that Louisville VCU game. So attendance on the rise in the Metro. Look at Gibson take it to the hole. Boy, that time Corey Jackson tried to cuff it out of the air. And had some help from his teammates to get it right back. I think the Hokies are going to have to get some easy buckets in transition. They don't want to go up and down all night. You can't go against this man-to-man -man in the half-court set all night long. It's just too tough. Corey Jackson and Kendrick Warren and the ball were all tied up for a couple of seconds, and they were scrambling for it. 7.46, 24-14 in the first half. VCU over Virginia Tech. Welcome back to college basketball 94 on prime in the Metro Conference and now a quick word from one of our airline sponsors Travel range through Continental one airline can make a difference one pass lets you earn free travel faster than any other airline That's the difference on Continental Now we're back in Richmond, Virginia Don Russell, Terry Gannon, our producer as always Tom Hewitt and our director Mark Grant Richmond Coliseum, our prime hoops in the Metro and the Battle of the Commonwealth of Virginia. VCU and Virginia Tech and VCU with a 10-point lead and the Hokies attack with the ball. In the man man defense, I think as active as I see, I've seen VCU defensively. That's why it's been so tough to shoot. Virginia Tech, what, six out of 19 now from the floor after That's that last shot. percent you look at the shooting for both teams. Prior to that shot by Travis Jackson. Here's Kareem Washington. He pushes the South Paul three that's short. And Virginia Tech comes up with the ball. Nothing doing on the fast break for Virginia Tech. And they've got to make it easy on themselves and get a couple of fast break buckets. That'll help your percentage in a hurry. 
Custis gives it up, fights to get it back, and kicks it outside to Purcell. Boy, Ace Custis really plays hard. Now he's wide open, and he drills it. Ace has his third field goal in the game. This guy leads Tech in rebounding and steals. He's second in assists, blocks, and he's the Tech uh, top scorer in Metro Conference play. I have not seen a year in the Metro, first of all, where there were more quality freshmen. Then you get Dewan Wheat, Jason Osborne at Louisville. You've got Honeycutt at Tulane. You've got Ace Custis and nationally, Don, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, look at the Joe Smiths, and, and I mean, it's been incredible. Three out of four from the floor for Custis. VCU turns it over. Jim Jackson on the offensive foul. Let's see if they count the hoop. I don't believe he's going to count it. Now Lenny Wirtz waiting to. No, it's it's a uh, it's a charge, and they do not count it right here. He leans the shoulder in. I'm not sure that was that much contact that, that call, but. Uh, it goes the other way, and Virginia Tech has not gotten a break so far. That's the 12th Virginia Tech turnover in 14 minutes of play. Oh. Oh. So turnovers, the big problem here in the first half for the Hokies, but yet they're only down by eight, slapped away and out of bounds by Damon Watley. Is that deserving of a shout-out? Uh, you said a, a three. A mini uh, shout-out, uh, shout not, not a full one. Yeah. 18 turnovers total in this one. 12 of them by the Hokies. Well, when you, you put together six for 19 shooting, 12 turnovers, it's not a first half that Bill Foster wants to run back and forth on the tape machine. Rodney Ashby has his second field goal in the game. Here's a guy that's playing time has gone down quite a bit the last couple of games, played only about 14 minutes a game. Here's Sean Smith over Ashby, way strong on that bank effort. Fifth rebound by Kendrick Warren, and VCU runs at the other end. See a little head and shoulder, Donnie, that Kenny Harris gave him at the end. A little move to dip inside. And he's going full blast down the court, and he dips the shoulder just a bit. Watch. Take a look on Jay Purcell. A little dip here. And obviously, when Kendrick's on the other side, you take that fake a little bit. Couldn't get the bucket to go, but got it up on the glass through the foul. Kenny Harris having another good game as always. Eight points, two assists. The foul is on Jay Purcell. That is his first. And Kenny Harris picks up his ninth point. Terry, can't you imagine? Of course, North Carolina doing quite well this year. They had this guy here. Don't even bring it up. And Cliff Rozier. But where are they going to play him, though? That's Everybody right. talks about where would they play him? They didn't no, say they would play. There's no room for him. That's why they're not there That's anymore. right. That's absolutely right. <laughs> and they're doing quite well for themselves, thank you. Yeah, Rozier uh, at Louisville, the player of the year last year, maybe again this year. I think he probably deserves that. And Kenny Harris, I think... Uh, really becoming a, a terrific point guard here at VCU. He certainly has. He's done so many things after being challenged by Sonny Smith. Look at Sean oh, nice. Smith. Boy, that's a tough move. You don't stop that. Nope. You maybe go down on the floor with it, but you don't stop it. <laughs> George Bird found that out very quickly. And that's the thing. I mean, he is he's pretty quick anyway. You know, uh, Sean Smith, watch the, the quick move inside, then gets taken down. And takes Bird along with him. If I'm going to go, you're going to go with me. That's what, you know, how many points is that worth? <laughs> and a takedown. McCoy, Warren pulls up with a jumper. Hendrick Warren has nine points, as we mentioned. He's now four out of seven and has already moved to the number two slot in VCU scoring history. Only Lynn Creech has scored more points. And he won't catch him. No, he will not. Here's Sean Good on the run, and Sean has his first two. And it's a 10-point game. I think as much as they've struggled in the early going, you know, a lot of it has to do, too, with Jimmy Carruth being on the bench. What a presence he is for them, and he's been out with the injured wrist. Yeah, he leads the Metro Conference and block shots. Yep. And he went out early with that wrist injury and has not been back since. That's an excellent point, Terry. Offensively, you've got an ace Custis to go to here, but oh, look at this man. Oh, what a rebound. Yeah. John Smith has six. And it, and he's starting to fill in this game the role that Jimmy Carruth would play. So he's being a presence in the paint. 
Kendrick Moore now working. Smith gives him a lot of room, and Kendrick comes up short on the jumper. And a foul underneath the hoop. It's going to be against BCU. And you see Jimmy Carruth over on the bench. He has that tape on that right wrist. The foul was on George Burr, his first. But Jimmy Carruth not getting much playing time in this one because of the injury. His Hokies are down by eight. We'll be back to Richmond on front. Is that what you're going for right now? I, I bet there is nothing in your refrigerator except something you can, that looks like a bi biology experiment. Whatever's in there you can have. Uh, I'll Thank offer you, you that. You're what a, what a heck of a guy. They've been home in three weeks, so it, it may not be fresh now. Speaking of fresh, this young freshman, Ace Custis, has eight in the game. And now a little... A little bit of pressure up the court. Yeah, a little bounce, like I say, in their step. Last five minutes or so. Sean Smith playing a great first half, too. And it's a six-point game. Yes, they're right back in this thing, and they started terrible. Terrence Gibson working against Sean Good. Birch played a lot here in the first half. McCoy, who's averaging about 17, has the two. Shot clock, you see it rolling down. McCoy wide open. Can't get the three. Bird rebound, tries to put it back up, and Sean Good knocks it away. Gibson tries to get it back. Scramble for the ball, and inside the Hokies can't get it. They try again. Yes! Look at Donald Corker. There are a lot of Virginia Tech alumni in this area, and they're excited because it's a four-point game. And now starting to get something without their set offense. That's only the second time that they scored without setting up their offense. And right now, the Hokies on an 8-0 run down. And that guy, Donald Corker, you saw the work from the senior from Decatur, Georgia, a moment ago inside. Picks up his first personal foul. But watch this defensive play here. Last time down, the shot from the corner, McCoy. And George Bird, strong rebound. But watch behind. The swat away the by Sean one. Good. <laughs> yes. He missed the first one. The guard from Virginia Tech. And here, the struggles by Jim Jackson, but they eventually score and, and get something without going to their offense. And I think that's what Virginia Tech is going to have to do here in this building to win tonight. Kenny Harris hits one out of two at the line. He's in double digits. And it's a five-point lead for VCU. They've led from the get-go. Largest lead has been 13 at 20 to 7. But the Hokies, as expected, hard-nosed defense to give and go. Good had to save it. Oh, what a catch. Matt Corker did a good job to help out his teammate, and then the Hokies lose it out of bounds. 13th turnover in the first half on Virginia Tech as we roll under the two-minute mark. Always important down the last two minutes of the first half. They could go to a nine-point game or be a three-pointer. Make a world of difference at halftime. McCoy can't hit the three. And the rebound, the Ace Custis and the Hokies with the possession. As Custis missed last year as a true freshman due to a knee injury. He was ticketed for a starting position and was able to get the hardship NCAA rule on the medical redshirt and got it right back. Nice. I was just about to say a nice swing of the basketball and inside outside game. And the quick hands of Kenny Harris interrupted me. He did. He has a tendency to disrupt a lot of things on the floor in Kenny, a positive way. You're stealing my thunder here, buddy. <laughs> but Virginia Tech really doing a better job now of moving the ball with a purpose. The time left in the first half. Sean Good off the back of the iron. And we have a whistle and a foul. It's going to be on VCU right underneath the basket. Kareem Washington will be the recipient of the foul. That's the first foul on Kareem Washington. Well, Bill Foster told us that his rebounding has improved. Defense has been pretty consistent all year long, but the shooting has just not been there, particularly late in the game. This is a team that was off to a 10 and 1 start. I think what shooting does too, when that is not there, it affects a team's confidence. You know, the other things can be constant, but when the shooting goes, if he's not confident offensively, Sean Smith, though, awfully confident in the first half, and that his play has been huge because Jimmy Carruth has been on the bench. He's four out of six now from the field, has had some big buckets. He has indeed, of course, Virginia Tech at 13 and 6. VCU at 11 and 8. That's the time left in the first half, and it's a three-point game. And 
Corker reaches in on Kenny Harris, and Bill Foster says, Donald, you need to play tough defense, but that is a silly foul because it's going to be two free throws for Kenny Harris. Yeah, they're going to double bonus now. And 25 feet from the basket, Kenny Harris was not going to pull up and shoot that. He was no real threat at that point. So Harris will go to the line. This guy tied Rod Ladd's single season record with 67 threes and now has passed him with a couple of trays in this game. VCU, seven out of eight at the line. Virginia Tech one of one at the charity stripe as Harris cashes in twice. Shot clock is off, five point game I would imagine. Bill Foster wants the last shot and a chance to go down three or maybe two at halftime. Not the time yet to go. Sean Smith with it, working one on one, puts it up, too strong off the glass. Warren gets the rebound. And too early. Three seconds to go and it's knocked away, so the Rams will get it. With two and five tenths seconds remaining, Corker did a good job to slap it away. And then Sean Smith went Two, three seconds too early, and that's why VCU has a shot here at the end. They get it in, Harris will take it, here's the three. Yes! What a huge three by Kenny Harris to end the first half. Should have never had the opportunity, but the shot, which was early at the other hand, allowed VCU to have 2.5 seconds to get this off. Watch Kenny Harris, top of your screen. Comes off the screen, no one picks him up. You've got to deny the basketball to Harris. You know he'd love to shoot the three. Smith gets out there on him, but it's too late. Kenny Harris excites the crowd. He scored the last six points for VCU in the half, and the Rams lead it 36-28. From the Coliseum in our prime hoops in the Metro Conference, 36-28. VCU with the lead over the Hokies of Virginia Tech. It was... Uh, an interesting first half, and taking a look at the standings, Terry, VCU, as you can mention earlier, uh, needs a win to really keep their hopes alive for the title here. Yeah, right now, people fighting for second place. I think Louisville pretty strong in the top spot, but along with Charlotte and a surprise Southern Miss team, who everybody wrote off at the beginning of the year right. after losing a couple, uh, Tulane, still kind of kind of young, but very dangerous team. South Florida, always tough at home. They're entertaining Louisville tonight. And uh, Virginia Tech with the great start, still the good overall record at 13 and 6, trying to get it back near the 500 mark in the, uh, in the conference now. And Bill Foster and his outstanding coaching staff as Sonny Smith at the other end as we're ready to get the second half underway. It was 20 to 7 early in this one, but VCU saw the Hokies fight back, but then Kenny Harris scored five points late, including that three-pointer at the buzzer, and now VCU, the first two of the second half, as Rodney Ashby scored. Well, teams tend to forget about Rodney Ashby, but we saw him at Louisville post 24 points, so you know that he can do it. Rodney Ashby, Kendrick Warren, and Tyrone McCoy all have been named Metro Conference Player of the Week. At one point this season, Sean Smith puts one up strong. Warren rejects it, but I think Kendrick got him on the wrist. That's the foul from Jim Burr. Well, they make the switch. They put Kendrick Warren on Sean Smith, and Watch Smith use his body. He knows he can't outquick Warren, but just a small step inside, a slow move, and he's going to use his body to draw the foul. Sean Smith will go to the line where he shoots 66%. This guy is the third leading scorer despite the fact he has come off the bench in six of 20 games. You know, we talk about him needing maybe to lose a few pounds, be quicker, but I, I really think he knows how to use his weight. You know, whatever he's going to get done out there, he uses his body to do it and, and really is deliberate inside, doesn't rush his moves. Does a nice job. Has a lot of uh, basketball savvy around the hoop, that's for sure, as does that guy, Kendrick Warren. And Kendrick now in double digits with 11. Doesn't get much easier than that. <laughs> and at the other end, John Smith tries to come right back, and Kenny Harris runs out of there with it for VCU, and throws it right through the arms of Rodney Ashby, but Gibson was there. <laughs> I tell you what, that almost took Rodney's uh, burr haircut a little bit shorter. Almost ended up in the lap of Sonny. <laughs> Here's Rodney Ashby right back with it. Got a good shot, but it didn't drop. 
Virginia Tech looking to run a little bit more. There's Jay Purcell, the leading scorer on the year for Virginia Tech, and he is yet to score in this one. He's averaging over 14 a game and does there you score go. Yep. right on cue. Way to go, Don. It's his first points of the game as he closes in on the 1,000-point club that he'll probably have in the next game or so. Good VCU trying to spread the floor, though. Work that high-low with Kendrick and Ashby. But too quick, the feet of Kenny Harris. Now that high-low so effective, especially when you get Warren down low. Take a look at him operating without much effort that time. He just caught it, turned, and dunked it the way Don Russell used to do. Yeah, on the trampoline. <laughs> no dribble, no nothing. Just go up and dunk. I tell you what, he is fun to watch. He is a human highlight film. We have seen that. Matter of fact, last time we were here, he took my breath away. He couldn't talk. That's right. He did. Well, that was a blessing in disguise. He was doing the play-by-play -play for a while. <laughs> Jim Jackson misses, tries again, gets his own miss once again. No. Virginia Tech battling on the offensive board. Sean Smith had it. Look out. Two on one. Dish to Harris. The assist to Kendrick Warren. The hoop to Kenny Harris. 18 in the game for the senior out of Petersburg, Virginia. Will Foster wants his club to grab the basketball off the board, not to tip it. They're trying the alley-oop pass and down low. Warren gets the rejection on the shot by Sean Good. Look at Kenny. Go to the hoop, can't get the finger roll and for Sell to get it. It didn't go, but it was fun to watch. Ooh. Warren blocking it at one end, leading the break. Sean Good had to go off his hands, out of bounds, and Virginia Tech a couple of times have had some opportunities, but that time they let it go. That's their 14th turnover. Watch Kendrick Warren come out of nowhere to block this. He's not guarding Sean Good, but he comes from the weak side to block off of the board, and you can see what he has done. Number three in the conference, Jimmy Carruth on the bench, the leader in blocks. VCU with a turnover. Jim Jackson and Jay Purcell have only five points between them in this game. John Smith to Purcell straight away. Jay trying to do something offensively. Nice little shovel shot, doesn't go. And another strong rebound by Ace Custis. He's emotional. He doesn't get the hoop, but he draws the foul. And that's what Bill Foster was saying right there, Terry, a minute ago. He said, don't just tip it, grab it, and put it up strong. Yeah, because you're going to get a, either the bucket or a foul. Where uh, if that thing's volleyballing up there, chances are Kendrick Warren's going to have the best shot at getting it. Second foul on Kendrick Warren. Second foul of the second half. And Ace Custis will go to the line. And he gets the free throw. You can see the brace on his knee. And uh, well, Foster flanked by a couple of fine assistant coaches. Bobby Hussey, who has won almost 300 games as a head college coach himself. And Belmont Abbey and Davidson. Chris Ferguson was on his right, top recruiter. Good staff in Blacksburg. Uh, both of these coaches with veteran staffs and have been together for a while. 42-35. VCU with the lead in the ball. 16-15 left in regulation here in Richmond. Warren given room by Smith, so he takes it. No. And a rebound to Gibson, but a foul is going to be against Ace Cuts. And they may have gotten Ace. they did it is a technical I think Ace was just showing some emotion the miss by Kendrick Warren and watch Ashby fight for the rebound the foul call right there you see the official when he works calling the foul right away and yeah he was just trying to get out of there I don't think at all he was trying to create any contact or push the defender out of the way matter of fact he was trying to position himself away from when he works but Rodney Ashby got in the way right That's right. So Custis now has four personals, because that'll count as the uh, personal foul. Ace over on the bench, not happy at all as McCoy's at the line and cashes in. We're going to check that. Are you sure that counts as a personal as well? If it's not a contact personal or a unsportsmanlike? We'll see. Marty Aronoff, our... Yes. Statman Deluxe said it is four, so okay. Here's Gibson with a long three. 
Murray and Travis Jackson. Well, that really hurts the Hokies now because he was playing hard. Yeah, you're right. That rule sometimes is cloudy yep. because it's supposed to be either an unsportsmanlike or a contact technical. Well, that was an argument technical. Yeah. John Smith, oh, showing his versatility with the left hand. And he draws the foul and will go to the line. And Kendrick Ward now, he has picked up his third personal foul, Terry. Watch the post up. He catches Warren on his backside. And a little contact over the top. And with the left hand, Sean Smith gets the bucket, pumps the right fist. Warren now goes to the bench with three. Now. And Sean Smith will go to the line. We'll see Kendrick over on the bench. Kendrick does not like to spend time over there, I promise you. That is his third foul, as we mentioned, and Smith will try to cap the three-point play, but can't. Jackson had it, lost it. Jim Jackson, no. Jim Jackson, no again. And finally, Bird comes out of there with it for VCU. 43-37. Rams. his second field goal in this game. Now he has to pick it up, team. Huge shot because of that. You're absolutely right. Watch him operate. The little left hand dribble and up over Travis Jackson and the foul. What a big time shot by Tyrone McCoy. Uh, he had to loft that over Jackson, who's about 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, really important for the Harrises, the Gibsons, and the McCoys to score now without Warren. 46-37, VCU, 15 and a half minutes left. Sonny Ram, Sonny Smith Rams with the lead. Back in a gift from her Metro crew. That's right. Understand it was an enjoyable uh, party as expected. You see the fast break points, VCU, the much better of it. And that's what Terry made reference to in the first half. Sean Smith once again, and Terry, he's really looking for the ball now. Uh, I tell you what, absolutely. This is the best game I've seen him play all year. I haven't seen all their games, obviously, but six out of nine from the floor and establishing himself every time down. 46-39. Gibson straight away. Harris gets a good screen, uses it for the three, can't get it. And somebody was rooting out inside there. And it's going to be a foul underneath. Well, you talk about losing the presence of Jimmy Carruth. Sean Smith is more than made up for it tonight. Little spin, and he always likes to take that spin to the middle. That's what you try to take away. But so far, VCU hasn't found a way to do it. The foul is on Sean Good. Another whistle quickly. That was the second foul on Good. That's his third. Two in a heartbeat. As the fifth team foul on Virginia Tech, VCU has but three. But Kendrick Ward over on the bench, towel around his head. Kendrick's always funny, Terry. He doesn't like to spend much time on the bench. Well, most players don't. But uh, Kendrick, I think, expects to be out there every minute of the game. It looks like he's fighting the cold like we have been. But right. well, we're struggling here. We got more cough drops here than the Smith brothers, I think, tonight. Tyrone McCoy, you can see, trying to pick it up here offensively in the second half. It's a couple of them. Not much emotion from Kendrick while on the bench, huh? Like a statue over there. 47 to 39. That Prime Metro. Fourteen and a half minutes left in the Richmond Coliseum. It's been a hard-nosed fought battle all the way, and Travis Jackson took one step too many. And a turnover gives it right back to VCU, the 15th for Bill Foster's team. So Ace Custis on the bench with four fouls. For Virginia Tech, Kendrick Warren with three fouls for VCU. Harris, the three, rimmed it. Washington tried to get it. And Jay Purcell will chase it down. And we have a whistle, and one of the Tech players comes up limping. Sean Good, so Lenny Wirt stops play. Sean 
picked up a couple of fouls rather quickly, and now will go out. Damon Watlington, the sophomore, will check in. Well, as we've told you, Prime Hoops has done its part and wants to with the devastating earthquake we had. And those are two very important numbers for the California earthquake relief. The first number is for general donations. The second one for blood donations, toll free. And if you want to help out in either with cash or blood, very important that folks in Southern California need your assistance and Prime Hoops doing its part to try to help out as well. well look at the defense Harris has played on Purcell and he shut him down the entire game. And a reaching foul on VCU. I believe they're going to get George Bird with it. The second on George. George has been playing quite a bit lately. We mentioned Rodney Ashby's time's been down, and he's averaged seven points and six rebounds. Bird has. This one doesn't go. VCU with the lead up, and Ashby with it off the glass. No, Bird. Well, Bill Foster and company thought that one was in the cylinder, but they'll give George Bird the tip in for his first two. That's why you never quit running on the break. Bill still arguing on the sidelines, but I think it was outside the cylinder now. Now Jim Berg and Bill Foster talking about it right now. The top of your picture. 49-39. Watlington to Trey. Give him a shout out. Go, go, David. That's right. <laughs> He's got two of them tonight. 49-42, a seven-point game just like that. Harris gets a pick from Ashby. Now Gibson the three. Terrence in and out. Look at Bird. Strong rebound. Uh, pretty soon somebody's going to figure out you got to keep him off the offensive glass. Two straight possessions where he has gone, crashed the glass, and got a putback. He has four points and six boards in this one. At the other end, Virginia Tech trying to set up Smith inside. Here he is. And, and the sure. foul. The yep. follow-up not there by Travis Jackson. How about the one Bill Foster argued about? Watch the follow-up by George Bird. Here's the pass from Gibson to Ashby. Bird, middle of your screen. He's going to follow it up. See if you can tell. That ball. You make the call, Don. <laughs> I pass. <laughs> Hanging on the rim, and Bill Foster, I think, still talking about that play. It was a little bit in the area. <laughs> Is that what we're going to say? <laughs> we're going to go with the area. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I tell you, the guy that's been in the area tonight has been Sean Smith. He's played very, very well. When he has really picked it up off the bench, as he has done all season long, and he has a nice touch for a big man. It's the first time that he's played well against VCU, too. Started all last year, played against them three times at a total of like 17 points. Boy, he's been smoking tonight. He's got 17 in the game. He does. Harris misses a three. Who has the rebound? But Sean Smith. And Smith, he'll take the three. Yes! Wow! Sean Smith now has tied his career high of 20 points in this one. And the sophomore is excited. What a night. Seven out of ten from the floor, and it's a four-point game. Washington with it down low. Rebound to Corey Jackson. And Ace Custis helps out as well. Now you wonder if Sonny Smith comes back with Kendrick Ward. They've really struggled without him in the lineup. I know he's got the three fouls. Jackson took that shot a little bit quick. And now Kenny Harris runs into the front court. McCoy for three. That's a big, big, big hoop there for the junior. It's been a game of runs, Don. We see you on one right now. 
Kendrick Warren back in. I think Sonny felt that he had to get him back in there, even though he's got three fouls. Corey Jackson now with three points and seven rebounds. So Kendrick Warren back in the lineup. Sonny Smith. I'm sure he's not checking out a recipe there. Looks like he's reading a newspaper article. <laughs> reading his own clippings. Well, they say that's the downfall of most yeah. coaches. Oh, and Jackson hits them both. So Sonny Smith, 54-49, and the three-point shot, a big one for VCU. This one drilled by McCoy. We'll be back to Richmond. Well, the VCU Ram fired up on this icy night here in Richmond, Virginia. And speaking of firing up, VCU sees Virginia Tech hit three out of four in this half from three-point land. And VCU turns it over. Look at Watlington with the quick move, and he hits the baseline jumper. That's only a two, so he doesn't get the shout-out. Doesn't get the shout-out. You know, one of those three-pointers by Sean Smith, he's 10 out of 13 this year, over 75% from three-point land for the big foul. Mark Jackson, a 6'9 freshman out of Philadelphia, has checked into the VCU lineup. This is Jackson with it now, big, strong freshman. Boy, right off the bat, he puts it in. Yeah, that knee injury earlier, now coming back strong. And a strong start to the year, and the knee really put him behind. We're in Richmond Coliseum, our prime hoops in the Metro. Don Russell, Terry Gannon, our producer Tom Hewitt, director Mark Grant. And we're at VCU 56-53. Watlington Metro may get a shout on that one. Yeah, he does. Nice little pull up. We've got Custis back in for Virginia Tech and Kendrick Warren back in for VCU. So basically the starting lineups for both clubs now. And you try to play that way for most of the rest of the game. Washington with it over on the left side. Gip, uh, Harris rather. Nice dish off to McCoy. And he banks it in. It didn't look real pretty, but it came back in the second time for Tyrone. He has really picked it up. He has nine second half points. McCoy started one of eight and now has made his last three field goals. So when he's needed to do it, he has done so. Inside, Corey Jackson lost it. Washington is fouled by Jackson in the backcourt. Now Corey a little bit frustrated because he didn't get that rebound back in and then he picks up the foul in the backcourt. Take a look, it just won't go for either Ace Custis or Corey Jackson. Jackson with a nice board. And takes it back up. Good strip by McCoy. Some contact here, and then the foul by Jackson. But it was a good, good block by Tyrone McCoy initially. So nine minutes and 20 seconds remain in regulation. It's 58-53. VCU with the lead over Virginia Tech. The Rams have led all the way, but the Hokies have made a couple of real quick runs on them in this one. And now Gibson turns it over with the travel. That gives it right back to Virginia Tech. Well, Sean Smith checks back into the lineup. There's a good look at the big 270-pound sophomore who's got that jersey soaked in perspiration. But he'll get another break with 9.07 left and a five-point VCU lead. Point lead, but it has been a hard-fought game all night long. Kenny Harris doing what he does best, that and shoot three-pointers. Dishing to Tyrone McCoy, a little bank shot around and in with the twice-banked basketball. And you look at the Metro leaders, Kenny Harris second in the league in terms of assists behind Delano Johnson, Jay Purcell checking in at number six. But Harris in most categories near the top for VCU. You know, and it's amazing. He is averaging over six assists a game in his career here at VCU. Those are some impressive numbers. Sean Smith missed it, but a foul underneath. On whom, Don? It may be Kendrick Warren. Ooh. Yes, yes, it is. Watch Smith. We'll see if we can see Kendrick Warren blocking out with Custis. Now there's the contact, a little bit over his back, and there's the call. So his fourth foul, that sends Kendrick to the bench, 8.53 left. There's a lot of time here, sonny has got to keep him on the bench for a while. That's exactly right. Virginia Tech has out-rebounded VCU by 10, 36-26, Terry, and 16 of those 
36 total for Virginia Tech on the offensive glass. But Custis misses the front end of the one and one. Kenny Harris explodes through the lane and a reach in foul on Tech. Now we can see it right away and we've seen it before here at BCU. As soon as there's some adversity and a, and a Warren goes out of the lineup last year he broke his foot we remember yep. Kenny Harris takes over yep. and, and does more than he even normally does and you see him right away looking to penetrate and dish as Kendrick Warren you see over on the bench with four personal fouls Jim Jackson back into the lineup for Virginia Tech that is a not a happy Kendrick Warren <laughs> he is showing some emotion yes. now it was not a moment ago but steady Kenny Harris as usual Picks up the free throw. 19 points and four assists in this one. Well, without Warren in the lineup, what happens is the offense changes. There's actually more movement. Yeah, but obviously you don't have the great offensive player in, but they go side to side, more movement, trying to get outside shots. Defensively, it hurts them, though. No question about that. And Smith will try to establish himself right away. Here he goes to work against Mark Jackson. Puts it up. To a new career high for the sophomore out of Gastonia, North Carolina, and he'll have a chance to go for his 23rd point as Jackson picks up the foul. You a little smile from Mark Jackson that time. You saw the smile a moment ago on Smith's face. Boy, look at it. Strong move inside. I told you he wants to turn to the inside down. You got to take that away. Turns right to the middle after a little fake and gets it to go. Wow. And he misses the free throw, however. A good free throw shooter, but didn't get it down. And it's a five-point game. BCU with the lead in the ball. Eight minutes and 20 seconds, as you see it roll down now here in the Metro on our prime hoops. Gibson down low to Jackson. Jackson now will try it on Smith. And he said, hey, if you can do it in one end, I'll put it right back at you. Watch him go at it. They'll try to go at it down here at this end again. It'll be interesting. There they are right now banging on each other underneath. Watley took the three straight away. No, John Smith kept it alive. Another offensive rebound for the Hokies. Man, they've done a terrific job all night of going to the glass. 17 offensive boards. And a reach in on Kenny Harris as Purcell tried to make the dribble. Kenny tried to get the steal and reaches in for his first personal. And now George Bird checks back into the lineup as Rodney Ashby will go out. You see Rodney going to the DCU bench. And it'll be the one and one for Jay Purcell, a 73% free throw shooter. He has only one field goal in this game, one out of five, and that was a three-pointer. He missed it. So Virginia Tech though, gets another rebound as Jim Jackson comes out of there with it. And Watlington working against Dixon and Damon gets it in. He's in double digits now with 10. And he's picking up the slack from the outside. 62-57, Terry. It has been a hard-fought game from the get-go. If Jackson gets the basketball low again against Smith. He wanted it last time. He got it and he scored. This time, Bird. Yeah, Bird missed it. Tries to get his own rebound, and he'll commit the foul. George Bird over the top. He gets his fourth foul. Personal foul. Look at the board board. Virginia Tech all night. Nine up tonight in this ball game. Look at this season. VCU second in the league in rebound margin. Virginia Tech in last place at uh, negative numbers. They get out rebounded in the Metro and tonight doing a great job on the glass without Jimmy Carruth who started the game and went out after injuring that uh, re-injuring his right wrist. So they're playing without Carruth, one of their big men, and doing a terrific job. Well, rebounding is one of those areas that has been better as Sean Smith gets the roll. You know what? That was the ugliest free throw you've ever seen. It went in because everything's going in for this guy. I tell you what, a new career high in this one for the sophomore, and he makes one out of two. 
Virginia Tech has Custis and Corey Jackson with four fouls. VCU with Warren and Bird with four. And Virginia Tech's bench scoring 41 to eight against VCU. Harris banks the three. No, Rodney Ashby tries. Gibson is hammered as he tries to put it up. And Sean Smith gets the foul. And you could tell Sean knew immediately he committed a foul, didn't try to start anything in this emotional game. He's, you know, he tapped him on there and said, yep, yeah, I fouled you. Nice young man. Not the only thing he's done wrong all night. VCU, I would imagine right now, trying to buy some time down until they can get Kendrick Ward back in the game. Maybe a couple of more minutes. Uh, 6.47 left on the clock right now. And that young man has to be worn out. He normally gets breaks throughout the game. He's gotten a few tonight, but he's done a heck of a lot of work, too, in between. Jay Purcell checks back in for Virginia Tech as Damon Watlington will leave. VCU has hit 14 out of 17 at the line, and Gibson, as you can tell, has six points. That's his first point here in the second 20 minutes, however. And Sonny Smith's team with a 64-58 advantage. Been straight man to man the entire game for both clubs. Purcell being checked by Gibson. Sean Good against Harris. And Purcell tried to get it down low to Sean Good and tried to throw it through a bunch of arms that time. Good luck, didn't quite work though. Pretty good active defense by VCU, the hands. Shot clock at 13. Comes in to Sean Smith, right back, nice. it goes to Good, and he puts it in. Great look by the sophomore Sean Smith to the other sophomore Sean Good. And the foul, and Good will go to the line. What a great look, Don, because so many times you see it, the defenders, look at Kenny Harris, turns his head, you forget about the man making the inbounds pass. That's exactly what happened to Kenny Harris. Great recognition by Good and by Sean Smith with the pass. In fact, I'll make a promise here. I'm never again going to say Sean Smith needs to lose any way to win. That's my problem. After tonight, he can weigh whatever he wants to weigh. And you got all over me, too. You got all over me. <laughs> a three-point game. And as Sean Good cashes in on the three-point play, and you could tell a moment ago, Terry, on that replay, Kenny Harris was looking for help immediately yep. when he, he saw he didn't get there, and Rodney Ashby got there too late. Here's where they're buying some time, running the clock down. That was shot clock down to about seven, and Kenny will go. Ashby with a big basket on the baseline for Rodney. Boy, nothing but the bottom of the sack that time. Ashby has eight. And now Kendrick Warren up off the bench, and he will check in. Five minutes and 41 seconds remaining in this one. 66-61, and Mark Jackson will go out. Played well while, while he was in there, though. He went at it with Sean Smith inside, scored a bucket. And Purcell now working against Terrence Gibson one-on-one, -on -one. and now Sean Smith with it. Off to Good, Good stop, puts it up, and tipped in by Jim Jackson. Ooh, that one was pretty close, but I'm sure Bill Foster was not going to get that one against him, that's for sure. And Warren, he goes down hard as he and Jim Jackson collide, and I mean Kendrick and Jim Jackson both went down hard, but I think Warren got the worst of that one, but he is a hard-nosed senior from here at Thomas Jefferson High School in Richmond, and he pops right up. Jackson just tried to take a charge and maybe got caught up underneath Kendrick. Kendrick Warren will go to the line. Kendrick has but 11 points in this one. He spent over three minutes on the bench. He has eight rebounds, a couple of blocks. He's out for the last three minutes and some change, 3-11. And, uh... oh. and McCoy was not blocked out, Terry, and he has a big, big stick back. Boy, those 
those are the kind of mistakes that'll just drive you nuts if you're Bill Foster. Sean Smith, though, he is so, so pleased with a 25-point performance from sophomore Sean Smith. It's been easy. It has absolutely been easy for him. And you talked about his body. I told you. Now, hold he on. dropped it. Now, I he said he was tell. quick even with it. <laughs> and McCoy, he and Sean Smith go down. Can you tell there's a little something extra in this one? A little bit. A little bit. And you have to know that even though so many of these folks braved the icy road conditions to come out there, had this been a sellout, which it would have been. Yeah, Ashby guarding Sean Smith and doesn't take the middle away again. Wants to go to the middle. You got to take that away from him. But Sonny Smith had to make the switch. Kendrick Warren with four fouls. So he's not guarding Sean Smith. And it allows Smith to operate a little bit easier now. And Tyrone McCoy has 15 points, 13 of them in this half. As we mentioned, he really had to answer the bell in the second 20 minutes. And the junior from Bethune, South Carolina, has done that. Bill Foster's team down by five. And that's the time left in our Metro Hoops on Prime. Now you could go to Smith or you can go to Ace Custis here and try to draw the fifth on Kendrick Ward. Quite a battle for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Sean Smith rolls this one off. And Kendrick Ward gets the rebound. His ninth board in the game. Rodney Ashby. Nice, nice fish to Gibson. And it's blocked by the Hokies. They're not going to leave anything out here. They're going to take it all the way to the hilt in this one, Terry. He fell down now. And Scott Smith makes the most of it. Not that it's made a difference tonight. He <laughs> scored with whoever was guarding him, but Ashby fell down a wide open jump shot. 27 points for Sean Smith. 10 out of 16 from the floor. As you mentioned, Terry, he scored a total of 17 in two games last year. Sweet pass from Tyrone McCoy down to Rodney Ashby. Ashby now in double digits with 10. It's really picked up in this one. Jim Jackson, they leave him wide open for the three, and he hits it. His first three-pointer of the game. Where was this offense at the beginning of the game? This is terrific right now. The last three minutes have been great, Don. The closest Tech has been in this one, and they're on a two-point game. More of our Metro Hoops on Pride coming right at you in a moment. Harry, the closest it's been since it was 2-0, VCU. Last three possessions haven't been bad at all. Now, let Sean Smith just throw Ashby out of the way. Get out of there. I'm going to shoot the J. Shoots the J, knocks it home. All right? At the other end, guess who gets loose? He got up off the canvas, took the eight count. Now he's ready to score at the other end. Easy lay-in for Ashby behind the man-to-man -man defense. At the other end, then, back comes Jim Jackson. Nobody picks him up off of the screen. They don't come out and get him. He says, all right, when in doubt, shoot. Buries the three. We get a two-point game. Kendrick playing with four fouls right now. Each team has two timeouts remaining. Both teams have committed 10 fouls, and the arrow is in the direction of Virginia Tech. And Purcell checking closely on Gibson. Warren wants it, takes it, and hits it. A big move for Kendrick Warren, only his second field goal in this half, giving 13 in the game, and now it's back up to four. They tried a little combination defense at the other end. Now VCU back for the first time to the 2-3. You know, Jackson just hit a three. You've got to be aware of him. Purcell can shoot the three. John Smith is shot from everywhere. Jackson, this three, not there. And Bird has the miss. Good move, I think, by Sonny Smith to go to the zone. Seven rebounds in the game for George Bird. McCoy, the tray. Gibson and Warren fight for it. Look at Kendrick go to work. And they're going to put the foul. Jackson draws the foul and a smart, smart play to draw the charge on Kendrick. Warren with the rebound down and puts his head down, goes to the hole. Watch Jim Jackson number three. He's right here, dip the shoulder, put the ball on the floor, and Jim Jackson draws the foul and out goes Kendrick Warren. 
Kendrick leaves with 13 points, 10 rebounds, two blocks. Sonny Smith's team now without their leading score and rebounder for the final two minutes and change. And Watlington back in the game now to shoot the three against the zone. Purcell, he'll take the three. Miss it. And a rebound by Custis. And Ace Custis slams it home. 74-72. For a long time in this game, that's what kept them in it, the offensive rebound. But that's the 20th offensive board for Tech. Now they're on their feet here in Richmond Coliseum. It's Kenny Harris's game now for VCU. He's got to make sure the ball gets to the people who need to have it. And they're trying to deny him the ball right now, and finally Harris gets it straight away. And they'll spread and let Kenny create, maybe dish or shoot it. Here's Harris. He lost it. Jim Jackson had it. Shot clock at six. Gibson, he hits a big three. The shot clock was running down, and Terrence Gibson, a big-time three-pointer. You're Virginia Tech now. You can't panic. You've got to work it and get a good shot. Custis missed it, and Board has his, or Bird rather, has his eighth rebound. So Terrence Gibson hit that big, big three-pointer, Terry, and he had to take the shot. You could play this possession without fouling, although I think we're going to go ahead and try to foul George Bird. They want the foul right now. They don't get it. You don't want to foul a Harris or a Gibson. And now they get the foul on Jim Jackson, and Gibson will go to the line. See, I think Bill Foster would have played that possession without fouling them. But as soon as Bird got the basketball, he wanted to foul the freshman. He didn't get it. By that time, his team saw him wanting to foul, and they go ahead and foul. Uh, Tim Jackson, you can tell, fouls out with seven points. He's averaging 13-3 at eight rebounds. Hit only three out of ten from the floor. But he played very hard, as he always does, Mr. Hustle. And now Gibson, who hit that huge three-pointer as the shot clock was winding down to the line. I mean, Terry, he had to get that shot off because he had nowhere to go with it, no time to pass to anyone else. And that was the backbreaker, at least at this point. Had to change the shot, too. Had to double clutch it. And he makes a couple of free throws, so five points for Terrence Gibson. Puts Bill Foster's club in a hole with 43 and six ten seconds remaining. 79-72, VCU by seven. Back to Richmond for more on Prime. Now the biggest Gibson. play of the game to this point. Terrence Gibson a moment ago, shot clock running down, buries the three. There you see it at four. And uh, what a huge three-point shot with Kendrick Warren out. Now a couple of players have fouled out. Bird gets the block as Virginia Tech tried to take it to the hoop. Jay Purcell was trying it, and the Hokies get it right back. And they get it outside to Sean Good. Smith, a three-pointer, missed everything, and Good saves it in, though, to Watlington. And Watlington should have launched it. Had no time to pass it. Got a foul now. You can't pick and choose. You got to go get him. A seven-point game, and you're going to have to foul your right, Terry, whoever has the ball. Oh, he tried to foul. No call. Okay. You got to foul, guys. You have to foul. And now they get it, but they lost about eight seconds or so, maybe ten. I think they lost more than that. They let Harris walk it up. I think you have to foul Harris even if you need to. I mean, right away, you need to get the foul. You know, and Bill Foster, this has been the story for this club. We talked to him at the shoot-around today, and he said, we've been so, so close down to the very end. We've lost some tough games where we couldn't hit the basket. He gets 27 from sophomore Sean Smith. And VCU is at 19 out of 23, make it 20 of 24 at the line. And Gibson has made every one of his efforts and a good look at Smith and Gibson now trying to make it eight for eight at the strike. And does. Boy, he played a big role in the last minute or so of this one. Purcell with the three, but it's going to be too little too late. Virginia Tech will take the timeout with two and nine ten seconds remaining. 81-75, VCU, Bill Foster and the Hokies still fight. And we're down to the final two minutes or two seconds plus of this one, Terry, and the Hokies are going to come up short. 
as VCU gets it in and uh, Bill Foster, you know, you have to feel for him. It's been that story for the last couple of weeks. They play teams down to the wire. They're in games, have a chance to win them. And over the last week and a half, Bill Foster's club just hasn't been able to win. You worry about a young team, too. And he's been able to keep them up to this point. Sonny Smith, a big win for them. 81 to 75, VCU wins it. They go to four and three in the Metro, and Virginia Tech drops to two and six in league play. The Hokies and the Rams tonight, a very good basketball game from the get-go. Kendrick Warren in the lane, picks up the basket and gets fouled. The Rams were up early. They added to the lead. Kenny Harris with the scoop through the lane. He wound up with 20 points to lead the Rams, but the Hokies going inside to their big gun, the freshman Ace Custis, only wound up with 12 tonight. He was in foul trouble most of the way. Bill Foster trying to turn things around, his team down eight at the break. VCU, though, with some great passing to Kendrick, putting the Rams up 10. Kendrick with 13 points, 10 rebounds. That's when Tech put together the comeback. Jim Jackson, the three-point jumper, VCU up two. And Terrence Gibson with the basket of baskets this season, somehow hitting this three-pointer. A minute and a half to go. VCU wins it by six. It wasn't that close. Consider that everything I read and hear about me, everything's a must win. My wife's even talking bad about me. Uh, yeah, it is a must win. Every win's a must win for us. 